I, I, I'm not aware of the, um, the weapons warehouse. Um, I have no information on that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We'll have another briefing tomorrow at 10.30 and another briefing at 3 o'clock. Now reaction to the NATO bombing of the Chinese embassy in Yugoslavia on state-controlled China Central Television. This portion of the newscast is just over 10 minutes. China says it is outraged after four people die and 20 are injured when NATO bombs hit the Chinese embassy in Belgrade. The attack on the embassy provokes angry demonstrations by thousands in China's biggest cities. And political and professional associations across China slam the Belgrade attack, calling on NATO to accept full responsibility. Hello and welcome to CCTV's English News. Topping today's stories, a NATO air attack hit the Chinese embassy in Belgrade just before midnight Friday. Four people have so far been confirmed killed in the attack, with 20 injured. The Chinese government has condemned the bombing. Liu Changying has the latest report on the attack. NATO jets struck the Chinese embassy in the new Belgrade district of the Yugoslav capital at 11.45 p.m. local time Friday, setting the two-story building ablaze. Four people are confirmed dead with 20 injured. The embassy were hit by three missiles. One hit the roof and another damaged one wing of the embassy building. The third destroyed the back of the building, causing further explosions of gas and diesel oil tanks that were stored in the basement. Representatives of the Chinese embassies said that the shock waves were so strong that they blew out the window panes and door glass from buildings located 300 meters away from the embassy compound. At least three ambulances and four fire engines were sent to the embassy to fight the blaze. Embassy staff are now cleaning up the debris. The Chinese embassy was the first foreign structure to be hit by NATO missiles since the bombing started on March 24th. Liu Changying, CCTV News. The government of the People's Republic of China issued a statement this morning on the NATO bombing of the Chinese embassy in Belgrade at midnight Friday. The statement holds that the U.S.-led NATO dropped three missiles from different angles on the embassy, seriously damaging the building. It said that U.S.-led NATO has been wantonly bombing Yugoslavia for more than 40 days, killing and wounding a large number of innocent civilians, and has now even launched an airstrike against the Chinese embassy. The statement calls this action a gross violation of Chinese sovereignty and the random violation of the Vienna Conventions on Diplomatic Relations and the norms of international relations. The Chinese government and people expressed their utmost indignation and severe condemnation of the barbaric act and lodged the strongest protest. The statement asked NATO to bear all responsibilities arising therefrom and proclaims the Chinese government reserved the right to take further action on the matter. The UN Security Council this morning also condemned the NATO attack on the Chinese embassy in Belgrade. Liu Changying reports on the pro-dawn emergency UN session. China's UN ambassador said the attack was an outrage, calling it a barbarian act. NATO's barbarian act is a gross violation of the United Nations Charter, international law, and the norms governing international relations. It is also a violation of the Geneva Convention. NATO should be responsible for all the consequences Yugoslavia's UN ambassador also condemned Friday's embassy bombing. Nothing new. This is the continuation of one illegal, brutal, and unscrupulous aggression against one sovereign country, Yugoslavia, against the peace and security in the region. Following the three-hour emergency meeting called by China early Saturday morning in New York, the UN Security Council issued a statement expressing its shock and concern at the death and damage in the attack. Before going into an open meeting to discuss the war, the Council expressed its sympathy and condolences to the Chinese government and the families of the victims. Liu Changying, CCTV News. 
Russian Foreign Minister Igor Ivanov has canceled his three-day visit to Britain due to the attack on the Chinese embassy. Ivanov called off the visit just minutes before leaving Moscow. The Russian Foreign Ministry says it is planning a statement on the bombing of the Chinese embassy. This afternoon, thousands of Chinese university students held a protest march outside the U.S. Embassy in Beijing. They were protesting the NATO airstrike on the Chinese Embassy in Belgrade. Students in the cities of Shanghai, Guangzhou and Hong Kong also staged demonstrations against NATO attack. Zhang Yuan has the details. The Beijing students are furious. Holding national flags and singing national anthems, thousands of them gathered outside the U.S. Embassy to protest against the NATO air raid on the Chinese Embassy in Belgrade. They've come by bike, by bus and by foot from over a dozen Beijing-based universities and colleges after hearing the news of the attack. The students marched outside the U.S. Embassy, shouting slogans such as safeguarding peace, give us back our embassy, and we are against hegemony. They've also forwarded a letter of protest to the U.S. ambassador to China. Their message to NATO was, stop the bombing. The students are demanding from NATO a full apology and a full account of what has happened in the raid on the Chinese embassy. Also on Saturday afternoon, over 800 students from seven universities in Shanghai marched outside the U.S. consulate in the city to protest against the NATO bombing. In a letter of protest, the Shanghai students called the bombing a gross violation of Chinese sovereignty and demanded that NATO bear all responsibilities arising therefrom. In Guangzhou, capital of southern China's Guangdong province, tens of thousands of university students marched in protest outside the consulates of the United States, Britain, France, Germany and Italy. They condemned the NATO air raid on the Chinese embassy as a barbaric act. Meanwhile, Hong Kong citizens expressed their shock and indignation over the attack by staging demonstrations in the Hong Kong SAR. In their letter of protest to the U.S. and British consulates in Hong Kong, they demanded NATO stop immediately all its military actions and settle the Kosovo issue through diplomatic negotiations. Zhang Yuan, CCTV News. On Saturday evening at a meeting in Beijing, the Chinese Youth Association condemned NATO's bombing of the embassy. Zhang Yuan once again. Members of the Youth Association expressed outrage at the bombing of the embassy of a sovereign nation and NATO's blunt trampling on the norms of international law in its war against Yugoslavia. This member said he was shocked and angry. He called the NATO bombing of the Chinese embassy a war crime and demanded prosecution of the criminals behind the attack. This man said that history will not forget the brutality of the bombing. This woman said that she was very sad at the deaths of the three Chinese journalists in the attack. She said it was wrong that superpowers can victimize economically disadvantaged countries. As a businesswoman, she said she would fight back on the economic front line. Zhang Yuan, CCTV News. The Chinese National People's Congress Foreign Affairs Committee issued a statement this afternoon. In the statement, the committee launched the strongest protest yet against a NATO attack on the Chinese embassy in Yugoslavia. It expressed the utmost indignation and the most severe condemnation of the barbaric act. The statement said that the U.S.-led NATO must bear all responsibilities arising therefrom. The war in the Balkans is the biggest humanitarian disaster since the end of the Cold War, the statement noted, adding that it has fully revealed the extreme hypocrisy of the United States' so-called protection of human rights. The statement pointed out it is an act of hegemonism and the Chinese people will never tolerate such an act. The Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference National Committee has strongly condemned the killing of Chinese embassy staff and correspondents in Belgrade in NATO's attack on the Chinese embassy. In a statement issued on Saturday, the committee said the attack was an undisguised assault on China's sovereignty and severe provocation of the Chinese people. It also said the attack was a brutal trampling on the norms of international relations. The statement said the CPPCC firmly supports the solemn and just statement of the Chinese government on the attack and demands that the U.S.-led NATO alliance accepts full responsibility for the attack and its consequences. 
all eight major Chinese Democratic parties and the All China Federation of Industry and Commerce today echo the Chinese government's condemnation of NATO's bombing of the Chinese embassy in Belgrade. Representatives of the eight parties and federation expressed their utmost outrage at the attack. In a statement issued after a meeting in Beijing, it demanded that the U.S.-led NATO alliance take full responsibility for the attack. The statement said that the Chinese people is peace-loving, but will not tolerate aggression or foreign pressure. The All-China Journalists Association today also expressed its utmost indignation and condemnation of the U.S.-led NATO attack of the Chinese embassy in Yugoslavia. A correspondent from China's Xinhua News Agency and a correspondent from the Guangming Daily and his wife were killed in the attack. Chinese journalists have braved the air raids for 40 days in Yugoslavia. A spokesman for the All-China Journalists Association said the journalists behaved in a just way. He said NATO's savage act against them has aroused the utmost indignation of their colleagues. The association expressed its deep condolences and sincere sympathy to the relatives of those who were killed. China's official news agency Xinhua and the Guangming Daily today strongly condemned the U.S.-led NATO killing of its correspondent Xiao Yuhuan in the bombing of the Chinese embassy in Yugoslavia. A top official at the Xinhua news agency said that Xinhua expressed its utmost indignation and severe condemnation of the attack and lodged the strongest possible protest with the U.S.-led NATO alliance. 48-year-old Xiao Yunhuan started work at Xinhua in 1975. He served as resident correspondent between 1990 and 1993 in Belgrade. In March, when the Kosovo crisis intensified, Xiao volunteered to return to Yugoslavia. Xiao Yunhuan's husband was among those injured in the bombing. Next, this